Now, the nomination of current MTN Vice President for Southern Region, Ebenezer Asante, onto the stand, onto Standard Chartered Bank Board has reignited the debate of board composition. That is, should persons serving in executive positions be allowed to serve on other boards as well? But apart from that, what can we learn about the governance of institutions and what are the features we should expect to see on various boards? Philip Namfuri joins us with some more analysis on this particular development. Philip, you're welcome back. Thank you very much. Right, so why this development? Okay, so you know, with this uh, appointment of um, Ebenezer Asante, the former CEO of MTN, uh, some are worried that how can he be with MTN and be on the board of a bank? Mm. But he's on the board as an independent non-executive director in the sense that he has no day-to-day -day role in running Stanchat. But because of his wealth of experience uh, garnered from being working with MTN and etc., he's put on, this, on the board as an independent and executive director. So basically, your role is to steer the firm in the right direction to make sure there's accountability, there's fairness. That's why there's independence attached to it. Mm -hmm. And it all goes to form part of the Corporate Governance Code of the Securities and Exchange Commission. We put together an infograph just to educate our viewers and listeners on what exactly some of these tenets are. We can look at this now. So these are some of the outlines or characteristics of uh, board compositions and so on and so forth. Sure. But what struck my mind was, couldn't we have an issue of conflict of interest here, especially when he belongs to or he's a ex top executive member of, you know, an, an organization, an international organization? Okay, so fair question. But if you look at uh, Stan Charles' board, they come under two regulatory arms, the Bank of Ghana and then the SEC. Bank of Ghana has its own corporate governance rules. SEC has its own corporate governance rules. The two, however, meet in alignment. But to get on the board of a bank, such as Stanchart, you must have gone through a fit and proper test to be a director on the board. So we'll, we will assume that both regulators, that's the Bank of Ghana, from the banking side and the SEC, because Stanchart is listed, both of them will have gone through proper due diligence to ensure that Ibn Sassanti can get onto the board. Mm -hmm. So if the regulator deems him fit with his world of experience, and they've conducted these tests, okay. and he passes it, then there's no problem. He can be on the board. Because you can be working here, mm. running the news, presenting the news, and you can be on the board of another company. Okay. It doesn't stop you. Once you meet the criteria mm. of the regulator, you are well and good. What can we learn about key compositions of a board? Okay, so like his role is, he's an independent and executive director. If you look at the SEC code for 2010, however, there's a new code in the works, which will be released somewhere, I'm sure, in the coming months. However, it says there should be a good number of independent and executive directors. So what this means is that you're not part of day-to-day -day running of the firm, and you are in a better place to push accountability. Apart from your board fees that you take, you are not aligned in any bonus payments, any salary whatsoever. So you can have the executive director being maybe the managing director or in, in, in the firm. You can have non-executive directors 
they don't form day-to-day -day management, but then they, they may have some substantial connection to the firm in terms of maybe uh, shareholdings whatsoever. But independent and executive directors, you have very minimal and then the minimal connection to the firm. And then the SEC has spelled out clearly what it takes for you to be an independent and executive director. The same thing also applies to Bank of Ghana's corporate governance code. So apart from that also, there's a separation between the board chair and then the chairman, hey, and then the CEO, I beg your pardon, of the firm. So you can't be the board chair and you can't be the CEO of a firm at the same time. And if you check, most of the listed companies have these. So these are some of the tenets. But the most important one that has arisen is because of Ebenezer Asante's role, okay. independent executive director. Mm. And if you tick all the boxes, the regulator will allow you to sit on the board. And he's a man of great experience, and I'm sure you have and a firm understanding of how institutions run, be it a bank or whatsoever, and drive Stanchart in the right direction. All right. Many thanks for that education. Uh, Philip, now for